yeah, this is a this is a, a different episode. A different episode. I do these every once in a while. I tell a bedtime story to the grown ups uh, out there. The the children of all ages, that is true. And tonight's a special night. I wanna read something. <clears throat> well read in the sense that uh, Uncle John John reads is is about totally made up, totally improvised stories. I have read stories in the past. Uh, most recently, I read uh, The Night Before Christmas. I've read uh, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. But I'm not going to read a story. I'm going to go ahead and do what I usually do for Uncle John John Reads. I'm going to make up a story. But if this is this is for the adults out there who are feeling overwhelmed, over overburdened by some very historic events over the, over the past 48 hours. So this is for you. I'm going to read a bedtime story to America. And I'm going to start with this picture. Well, now. What we have is we have a 3D render of the inside of a house. And uh, this is obviously a... Uh, I don't know if it's a house or a room. It might be just a room. And and the thing that the thing that's really interesting to me is, um, in this in this room, there's a cot, there's a a, a a desk, a writing desk actually. No computer. So this is like this is very old timey. This is probably a turn of the century maybe. Uh, there's a shelf that's got you know like a vase or something something in it but not a bookshelf it's not floor to ceiling it's it seems to be attached to the wall of this room there's a place to hang your jacket there's also a fire uh in in this room so so it's kind of in a place that looks like a fireplace but there's no hole in the wall where normally there's a fireplace there's when there's a fireplace there's a sp there's a recess into the wall where you put the fire the logs in and you light the fire and then there's what is called the flume see it's the it's where the chimney meets the fireplace right but there's no it's there's just this fire on the floor of this room um, and there's a fire, yet the windows are open. So not a very good, not a, I mean, well, maybe, the, well, maybe that's why the windows are open. I was going to say not, not a very economical way of managing the heat, but actually <laughs> maybe <laughs> because, because there's no chimney, the windows have to be open. Otherwise, whoever lives in this room is going to suffocate. And that's not a really good way to go. It's not a really good way to go about doing your uh, your writing at your desk. You're starting to feel sleepy. Oh, I think I'm just gonna lie down on my bed. I'm just gonna no, don't do that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I'm not really sure what the story is with this room. This is obviously a 3D rendering, so it looks like one of those um, those um, point and click detective games that were were super popular like 10 years ago. Uh, when 3D graphics were, were just starting to come into their own, like really started, you could start interacting with your environment in these in these video games. Um, there were a ton of like Sherlock Holmes and a and a horror themed like like Cthulhu Lovecraftian themed games where you would interact with your environment trying to solve mysteries and puzzles and whatnot. Uh, Mist Mist was like very much like this, uh, and this very much has this feel feel of that. Um, so, so from this room, what are we going to get? We're going to get, oh, okay. <laughs> this actually, this next, this, this explains the room. The room is actually not a room. It's a, a cabin. It's a cabin, uh, I've decided. 
uh, in there, and it's in the woods. Very small cabin. There is a chimney. I'm thinking. I I think there's. I'm looking at this. Yeah, there's a chimney in, but a very calm, a very peaceful, very simple, oh, rustic. That's the word, rustic. It's a very rustic uh, 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 environment. So this is, is, is this a log cabin? I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. This is what, what we'd call a woodblock print. So, so somebody is living a very rural life. This is, this is no electricity. I don't, I don't see power lines or anything or, or TV or telephone or anything. So, so very rustic, very rural cabin in the middle of nowhere, probably because it's in the middle of the forest, but, but not so crude because, um, there's a there's a there's hooks on the wall where you could hang up a jacket and uh, there's a writing desk so a, so an educated person a literate person and so uh, and so what's so special about this house so okay um, uh, there's a so, so it's in the middle of oh I know what this is. I think I know what this is. Yeah, I know exactly what this is. I know exactly what this is. Uh, this is a small lake. And so this cabin, one room house, this small, small cabin, uh, is fronted by woods and it, it borders uh, a lake, a small lake. So small, shallow, there's fish probably in it, but very so. There, but there's not going to be like rough waves, or a or rough microclimate. It's it's a very small lake. You you could even say that it is it is, it's either a very small lake or a very large pond. Um. So it's just kind of it's so placid. Placid is the. The atmosphere we're getting here. And so we have a very literate person, a person of letters they write, but but they prefer to be alone in the woods near the serenity of a lake. But not so big that there's marine traffic and trade. Um but not so small that, you know, there's not going to be like fish if you need to go fishing or anything like that. Or go for a swim. Let's say you could, you could do that. Maybe you could go for a swim. Uh, and this is a, another scene, another image taken from the game that shows you the interior of this cabin, it now shows you the outside. And if you look closely, if you look closely, there is a rainbow over the woods, over the forest. And there is a, a field of flowers approaching the, the tree line of this forest. And uh, very near the tree line in this image is a pile of stones. And not just like a, a, a haphazard pile, pile of stones. These are, these are rocks that have been manually placed one on top of the other, relying on the laws of gravity to keep them from falling over. So they've been, so, so humans arrange these rocks in a way that they could be stacked one atop, above the other. A very, a very zen uh, look to it. So with the rainbow, the clear blue skies, the green of the trees, the flowers and the very zen garden 
appeal of the uh, stones stacked on top of each other. Very nice. So that brings us to the next image, which is a lava cake. Um, so what is the message of the lava cake? The lava cake is either something left over from another episode of Uncle John John Reads. Yeah. Uh, and it is, um, but there's something about it like the the richness and the just the the luxury of just having a dessert that that is an expensive dessert it's a very rich dessert very rich in terms of flavor and chocolate and, and sweetness it has to be prepared by a chef you can't you know, that's what lava cakes are right so there's a bit of this luxury, this uh, this order that is that clashes with the nature scenery of living living in a cabin by a, by a lake. And um, so this this is a juxtaposition, juxtaposition. What are the what are the sacrifices, the compromises you're you're supposed to make? C can you have both worlds? Uh, so, okay. Yeah, I figured this out. I figured this out. I yeah, I I I knew what this was, but I figured this out. So now we have now because we have the woods and we have people, somebody deciding to live in the in in isolation away from uh, at all, but living one with nature, but also adding a human component and intelligence to it. Now the uh, the the fireplace. The writing desk, stacking the stones in a garden on a within a field of flowers, right? And now we have a guy who is a neckbeard. The architect of all of this is a is a young man who's a neckbeard, and with no attention to how he combs his hair. His hair is a mess. It's a complete mess, and not in the, not in the uh, the bedhead or the the careful carefully tousled look that takes you thirty minutes in front of a mirror to get to get that look just right. No, this is clearly a cat who does not care what his hair looks like. He he went in for this photo, which is clearly taken in the in the uh, mid. 19th century and they were like okay you gotta put on this suit and it's like i'm just gonna put on the top because you're not gonna take a full photo of me you're just gonna do like from from like the the, the chest up right okay fine i'll put on a shirt i'll put on a tie i'll put on a coat but that's it i'm leaving my cargo shorts and my birkenstocks on man i'm not that's that's it and as soon as as soon as the picture's done i'm out of here <laughs> And, uh, and they're like, okay, okay, but you, but you gotta like uh, uh, comb your hair. And so he just kind of runs his, runs his hand through his hair and he's like, good enough. They're like, no, nah, you got it. And he's like, good enough. Clock's ticking, I'm out of here. I'm ghost. If you don't take that picture right this second. They're like, okay, but you gotta, you gotta smile. And he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, it's a photo dummy you gotta smile for the camera and he's like uh, all right they're like what what are you what are you doing what are you are you smiling and he's like yeah i'm smiling take your picture before i stop smiling and they're like Pfft. okay and so this is that and so they did and this is what we get. A guy who clearly does not care at all about how others see him. And it's just like, okay, I got to do this thing. Okay. All right. Just do the thing and let's move on. 
It's that it's, it just screams that attitude. My my anime is about to t about to start. Hurry up, okay? Come on. <laughs> I should say that. That's really mean. And so when they fit, when they when they took the picture. And they took a picture. The next thing that happened is, uh, is he he ran out of the studio, and he joined his friends, and he said, "Okay, yay, let's go take a picture." Uh, no, I, I finished taking a picture. Let's go dance. And then they danced uh, together in the forest. And they held hands and they danced in the circle. Um, but there's no music. But but they are, but they hear music in their heads, and because there's three of them, because it's it's this dude, this this neck beard, uh, and his two other friends, and uh, and uh, 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 um, the one guy, one of his friends has a T-shirt that says "My Waifu," and there's a there's a cutie cartoon picture of a of a of a little girl on his shirt. Um, and so they all dance together, holding hands in a ring. Each person has their own music in their head, so like the music is, so their dance is not even or anything. But you know what? They're in the middle of the woods, next to this this one room cabin, tiny one room cabin, with a fire, uh, but no fireplace and no chimney, so carbon monoxide poisoning is a real danger. But not really, because uh, they keep the windows open all the time. So it's actually maybe okay, sort of. I don't know. Um, but anyway, they're dancing in a circle, and they're happy, and that's the end of the story. The end. And now I get to tell you I kind of told you a lie. I kind of lied to you. I did make up that story. I did. But I actually knew who that person was. And that person is very important to sort of the conversations and the themes running around on social media yeah, actually, all of the media for the past uh, 48 hours, 72 hours. And that person is uh, Ralph, or sorry, not Ralph Waldo Emerson. No, that's for the American Tao. American Tao is, the Tao is where I start reading about Ralph Waldo Emerson. No, I'm, I'm talking about Henry David Thoreau. Henry David Thoreau. And Henry David Thoreau was the cat who built a small cabin, I, in, is a very loose term, in, out in the woods next to a lake called Wal Walden Pond. And he wrote a book, of, a collection of essays. And the collection of essays combined, he called on Walden. I could go on and on about Thoreau. I could. But really what I want to bring home to you is the kinds of things that he talked about in his essays, his, his philosophy for America, is what was being exercised mistakenly um, over the last 48 hours. And I think that the message that was being missed is this idea of civil disobedience. In at the heart, the truth of the civil disobedience that Thoreau is talking about is this quote that I found. And the quote reads, what lies behind us and what lies ahead of us are tiny matters compared to what lives within us. In this statement is especially true in a particularly poignant to the words that are being said tonight by the leaders of this country in by in in being heard 
by people who are being are feeling very frightened about the future. And this quote should calm them if they understand what it means. It should make them not necessarily feel better, but make them feel empowered. So I'm going to read it again, and I'm going to leave it to you to interpret it. What lies behind us and what lies ahead of us are tiny matters compared to what lives within us. And so with that, I'll say to you, America, good night.